right, so this go around, we look at Stephen Fry monk debate clips on political correctness. Um, yeah, this is um, okay. I see Jordan Peterson in the background. So this had to be some, probably some interesting discourse happened within this, if I had to venture a guess. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? In, in agreeing to uh, participate in this debate and stand on this side of the argument, I'm fully aware that many people who choose incorrectly, in my view, to, to see this issue in terms of left and right, devalued and exploded terms, as I think they are, will believe that I am betraying myself and such causes and values that I have espoused over the years. I've been given huge grief already simply because I'm standing here next to Professor Peterson, which is the very reason that I am standing here in the first place. I'm standing next to someone with whom I have, you know, uh, differences, shall we say, in terms of politics and all kinds of other things, um, precisely because I think all this has got to stop. This rage, resentment, hostility, hostility intolerance, above all this um, with us or against us certainty. Well, see, the problem, like the thing is, like that's that's happening on both sides of the aisle. Though. Like that's left or right. If you disagree with someone these days, it doesn't matter which tribe you associate with, you're going to be, a lot of times, you're just not going to associate, you know, most people, a lot of people aren't going to, I say most, a lot of folks aren't going to associate themselves with somebody who they disagree with. Um, but, yeah, let's see what else I've got to say, because... A grand canyon has opened up in our world. The fissure, the crack, grows wider every day. Neither on each side can hear a word that the other shrieks, and nor do they want to. While these armies and propagandists in the culture wars clash, down below in the enormous space between the two sides, the people of the world try to get on with their lives alternately baffled, bored, and betrayed by the horrible noises and explosions that echo all around. And I love the picture he painted there. I love that. Because you just he's not wrong either. Because on either side, especially as far as talking heads and media personalities and politicians are concerned, like it's it's just nobody's willing to listen. You've also got the provocateurs and stuff like that, and people to just. But it, down in, within that chasm that's that's been opened up because of the split, we're all just trying to take and live our lives. But I, the fact that he likened it to the, the Grand Canyon, you know. Just, yeah, that's very vivid and very accurate on what's going on. I think it's time for this toxic, binary, zero-sum madness to stop before we destroy ourselves. Um, I'd, I'd better nail my colors to the mast uh, before I get any further in this. It's only polite to give you a sense of where I come from. I, all my adult life, I have been uh, what you might call a lefty, a soft lefty, a liberal of the most hand-wringing, milksop, milk-toast variety. <laughs> not a burning man, the barricade socialist, not even really a progressive worth the name. I've been on marches, but I've never quite dared wave placards or banners. Um, <laughs> Am I a loathed member of that band, the, uh, an SJW, uh, uh, a social justice warrior? I don't think highly of social injustice, I have to say, but I character myself mostly as a social justice warrior. My <laughs> intellectual heroes growing up were Bertrand Russell and G.E. Moore, liberal thinkers, people like that, writers like E.M. Forster. I believed, and I think I still do believe, in the sanctity of human relations, of the primacy of the heart, and friendship, and love, and common interest. These are more personal, interior beliefs than they are political exterior convictions, more a humanistic version uh, of a religious impulse, I suppose. I trust in humanity. I believe in humanity. I think I do, despite all that has happened in the 40 years of my adulthood. I am soft, and I can easily be swept away by harder hearts and harder intellects. I'm sometimes surprised to be described as an activist. So, wishy-washy? Or you just kind of, like... There's a difference between being able to have your mind... You know, being able to take and change your mind because you, you you learned something or you know found something that actually 
proves whatever belief you have is wrong, but just taking kind of blow with the wind or, you know, let somebody with a hard glare and, you know, hard sounding rhetoric taking sway or, yeah, I don't know. But over time, I have energetically involved myself with what you might call causes. I grew up knowing that I was gay. Well, in fact, from the very first, I knew I was gay. I remember when I was born looking up and saying, that's the last time I'm going up one of those. Um, <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish, so I have a natural obviously, horror of racism. Uh, um, I naturally, I want racism, misogyny, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, bullying, bigotry, intolerance of all human kinds to end. That's surely a given amongst all of us. The question is how such a golden aim is to be achieved. My ultimate objection to political correctness is... Well, I mean, there's, to be honest, there's, the human condition is going to ensure that none of that ever goes away. But however, making sure that it doesn't become the norm or the standard of things. That should be the goal. Not that it combines so much of what I've spent a lifetime loathing and opposing, preachiness, with great respect, um, <laughs> piety, uh, self-righteousness, heresy hunting, denunciation, shaming, assertion without evidence, accusation, inquisition, censoring. Uh, that's not why I'm incurring the wrath of my fellow liberals by standing on this side of the house. Um, my real objection is that I don't think political correctness works. I want to achieve, I want to get to the Golden Hill, but I don't think that's the way to get there. Um, I believe one of the greatest human failings is to prefer to be right than to be effective. Um, That's, wow. I, I know I've stopped it quite a lot, but I probably will just because I like this kind of discourse. Uh, it, that right there, it, want to be right, more concerned about being right than being effective. Like, that's holy crap. Because there's a sense of, of, you know, you get that sense of haughtiness of like, oh, yeah, see, I, mm, I'm, you know, that, that self-importance, that self, it, stroking that ego whenever you're, you, you're the one that has to be right. Instead of taking and bringing about what you, what you think or what you're trying to accomplish in a way that actually helps accomplish it or, or has someone take and maybe change their view a little bit, it's more effective but you don't take and get that instant gratification of I'm right. That that ego stroke. Like that's yeah. And, and political correctness is always obsessed with how right it is without thinking of how effective it, it might be. I, I wouldn't class myself as a classical libertarian, uh, but I do relish transgression. And I deeply and instinctively distrust conformity and orthodoxy. Uh, progress is not achieved by preachers and guardians of morality, but to paraphrase Yevgeny Zemyatin, by madmen, hermits, heretics, dreamers, rebels, and skeptics. I, uh, I may be wrong. I, I hope to learn this evening. I really do think I may be wrong, but uh, I am prepared to entertain the possibility that political correctness will bring us more tolerance. Uh, and, and a better world. Um, but I'm not sure. And I would like this quotation from my hero Bertrand Russell to hover over the evening. One of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid, and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. Let doubt prevail. Well, if you take everything at face value, I mean, if, you, if you're going to take and just hold forth to whatever your viewpoint is, and that's the only, only thing that can be right, then you, you're not giving any wiggle room of, like, of any growth within yourself whatsoever. And a lot of times, like, that's, I'll, that's a good quote. I'm not taking a look. I don't, I've never heard of Bertrand Russell. I have to look him up and read about him. That's, that's so true. That is so true. See, debates like this here, just the fact that Jordan Peterson's on the, uh, that makes sense. They're in Canada. I'm surprised there wasn't wholesale just absolute pandemonium because Jordan Peterson was there. Because, uh, 
So a lot of folks that do not like him there, but there's a lot of folks that do not like him here either. Uh, but the fact that, and my whole problem with political rec correctness is either you got to hold to the party line and you can't take and do, like you can't be, you can't step out of anything. Like unless you take and line up with, what, oh no, this is, you can't say that, you can't do this, you can't, it's like, bruh. Who made you the arbiter, arbiter, arbiter of things? So it, it's the fact that yeah, why are they taking protest and want to have fights here whenever somebody that that they don't care for? That there's no free free flow of ideas. There's no debate or free flow of ideas, and that's part of the problem of political correctness can't have a different opinion or you can't take and say something the wrong way which is just absolute insanity because the difference between being just despicable yeah just It's, it's interesting to hear that there really doesn't seem to be a problem, but yet I think we all instinctively know that there is some kind of problem. There isn't censorship. Of course not in, in the way that there is in Russia. I've been to Russia. I uh, faced off with uh, a, a, a deeply... Hum a bullshit? Like, did he, there's, there's not censorship? Really? Really? I give you Twitter with the Hunter Biden laptop. Like that guy's like our government used private entities to squash. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's definitely censorship. Like just say something, say something wrong or go against. Yeah. It, it's crazy. At least here there's censorship. Homophobic and unpleasant man. And there's political correctness in Russia. It's just political correctness on the right, and that's what I grew up with, political correctness, which meant that you couldn't say certain things on television, you couldn't say fuck, for example, on television, because it was incorrect to do so. And as always, the same reason was that someone would appear and say, I'm not shocked. Oh, of course, no, I'm not shocked. I'm not offended. I'm offended on behalf of others, young, impressionable, Virtue signaling. Minds, the vulnerable, and, and that's not good enough. It's, it's so often people are saying, you see, I don't mind being called a faggot or a kike or whatever, or a mad person, because I've got mental health issues. I don't mind people insulting me. And people say, well, that's all right for you, Stephen, because you know you're strong. Well, I, I don't feel particularly strong. And I don't know that I like being called a faggot and a kike particularly, but I don't believe that the advances in my culture that have allowed me to marry, as I have now been for three years to someone of my gender, um, I don't believe they are a result of political correctness. And maybe political correctness is actually just some sort of live trout that the harder we squeeze it, the further it goes away. And, and you will be saying, I'm not talking about political correctness, you're talking about social justice, with which I agree with whether you want to call it identity politics or the history of your people, the history of my people. My people were slaves as well. Both the British were slaves of Romans and the Jews were slaves of the Egyptians. All human beings have been slaves at some point, and we all, in that sense, share that knowledge of how important it is to speak up. Um, but Russell Means, who was a, a friend of mine towards the end, who founded the American Indian Movement, he said, oh, for God's sake, call me an Indian, or a Lakota Sioux, or Russell. I don't care what you call me. It's how we're treated that matters. And so I'm really addressing a, a more popular idea. Um, <laughs> Also, actually, in Barrow, Alaska, an Inupiat said, call me an Eskimo. It's obviously easier for you because you keep mispronouncing Inupiat. Um, <laughs> it, 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 you know, words do matter. The, I'll just end with a quick story. Uh, gay rights came about in England because we slowly and persistently knocked on the door of people in power. We didn't shout. We didn't scream. People like Ian McKellen eventually got to see the Prime Minister. And when the Queen signed in the royal assent, as she has to, for the bill allowing equality of marriage, she said, Lord, you know, I couldn't imagine this in 1953. Really is extraordinary, isn't it? Just wonderful. 
and handed it over. Now, that's a nice story, and I hope it's true, but it's nothing to do with political correctness. It's to do with human decency. It's that simple. Yeah. It's nice. I'm, I'm still very lost about why we aren't talking about political correctness. We're talking about yes. politics, yes. and uh, uh, that's fine. A lot of times, that's where political correctness, a lot of the political correctness kind of veers towards. Because if you say something the other side disagree with, disagrees with, you're labeled whatever, and you can't say that, or you can't do that, or you have respect for this, have respect for that. It's just... It's, it comes from both sides, and it always gets that political tint to it. So that makes sense, at least in my opinion. Because here, that's how it happens. Uh, and I share... You know, I share exactly what you think about it. I'm not an enemy of identity politics per se. I, I can obviously see where it goes wrong and where it's annoying. Let's be empirical about this. How well is it working for you in America at the moment? What? Not well at all. Really isn't. Right. Uh, you can answer me in a moment. Um, the, reason, the reason that Trump and Brexit in Britain and all kinds of nativists all over Europe are succeeding is not the triumph of the right. It's the catastrophic failure of the left. It's our fault. We He's not wrong whatsoever on that point, neither. That's the reason why we got the... the look, I've had a lot of folks come in here and you know, they, they want to bash Trump. A lot of folks come in here and, oh, what's wrong with Trump? Because I've made comments... Because I, I personally, I'm sorry, I personally don't care for Trump. The economy was humming along. But his policies have had a negative effect, especially since he's gotten out of office. Granted, Biden hasn't helped. I don't like him either. But, like, it's, it's one of those things where we don't have any good candidates here. But the whole reason why Trump won, like, to, the other... You, you pass Obamacare, which was a half-fucking measure. Oh, so many people were able to take and get medical coverage. If they fell below a certain income level, they could get medical coverage before Obamacare. The problem is, is it put people that couldn't afford insurance and kind of lived in that fucking gray area where they had to take and hold out on stuff or had to take and, you know, get loans on stuff or had to, you know, just in that gray area where you couldn't afford it. Now they had to take and get insurance. They had to take and use a marketplace. The problem was after the first year or two of you, well, actually, not even after the first year or two, if you had a job and stuff like that and you couldn't, you had to use that, it started taking money out of your, out of your, whatever you were taking from taxes that you're, that you paid in because you got child tax credit and stuff like that. You would take and lose those things, and you would owe money. It was in that negative. Yeah, you got you're able to take and get insurance for your family for thirty bucks a month, but at the end of the but tax time, whenever you're six hundred dollars in debt to the government, and now you got to set up payment plans throughout the year on a tight budget already. How's that helping? It's not. It's making their situation worse. Which just goes if you. Pass something like that, you rammed it through Congress, you took and wrote EOs for it, you should have just took and set up a national health care. Well, health care is free. Like, you should have just took and went full bore with it. Instead, you had this bastardized bullshit. And you had people who were paying $75, you know, $50 a week, $65 a week for family coverage, or $5 a week for personal coverage, $60 a week for family coverage. I know multiple people who had to either drop their insurance and pay the fucking penalty because they couldn't afford going from $55, $65 a month or a week for family insurance at their job to paying $170, $200, $250 a week. Because 
at that level, you take it to the marketplace. Well, the the what you got to take and pay out of pocket, your deductibles at bronze level were stupid. Oh yeah, you're covered. You know, oh yeah, twenty dollar copays, fifty dollar for specialists. But anything past that, we're not covering anything until you pay fifteen thousand dollars per person as your deductible. Where does that help? It didn't. It was a bastardized bullshit. And other things that happened during the Obama administration are the exact reason why Trump won. That and his water cooler uh, politics. And probably some of the locker room talk too because he just he's not like as suave with talking as the rest of these uh, the rest of the political people. Which... A lot of folks feel like a lot of politicians are basically snake oil salesmen, so not a big surprise. So if anybody's wondering, you're like, oh, I don't see how y'all voted, how America voted for Trump. That's how. That's how. You don't live here, you didn't see it. You only took and seen what they showed on TV. Be here, take and watch it, listen to the, what he was saying, the stuff he was talking about. It's water, cool, water cooler politics, which was sounded more relatable than what Hillary or anybody or Biden or anybody else that was running against him was taken and talking. That's how he won. Straight up, that's how he won. So, yeah. Absolutely. My point is not that I've turned to the right or anything like that, or that I'm nice and fluffy and want everybody to be decent. Mm. I'm saying fuck political correctness. Resist. Fight. If you have a point of view, fight it in the proper manner, using democracy as it should be, not channels of education, not language, you know? It's so silly. But it, 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 there's a chess rule, you know? In chess, the best move to play in chess is not the best chess move, it's the move your opponent least wants you to play. You At the moment, the you're being recruiting sergeants for the right. But by Wait annoying and upsetting, and instead of fighting, either fighting or persuading. But political correctness is a middle course that simply doesn't work. Well, first of all, of course, I, you know, I recognize the, the bestiality of Weinstein and the um, monstrosity of his behavior, uh, and it was shocking to me. I actually worked for him, um, script doctoring, as it's called. Um, I never had the bathroom towel. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, but for pretty obvious reasons, uh, uh, but it's, you know, <laughs> grotesque and I, I can't imagine how vile it must be for such a powerful man, and he was. I used to play a game um, at the Cannes Film Festival where, um, in his years of power, we're walking from one hotel at the, uh, at the end there, uh, all the way up to the Palais de Festival, um, you would get ten points every time you heard the word Harvey. Um, and you'd usually, a uh, 10 minute walk, you'd have uh, 300 points. Because it was, yeah, Harvey's got the script, Harvey's got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a meeting with Harvey at the Majestic uh, uh, in the afternoon. He was immensely powerful. And I think that's ob obvious that someone in that position, uh, uh, abusing and threatening and uh, hindering the livelihood of women, is, is grotesque in, in the extreme. But I have to tell you, uh, there is genuine feeling amongst many people I know that. Shh, that we can't speak our minds. We can't actually speak to the true nuance, the true depth of sexual romantic feeling between men and women. It's not a subject I'm absolutely expert on, but it counts <laughs> between men and men as well, though I know when it's men and men, you might say, well, that's different because their women have had a different experience in history and I don't want to enter that uh, particular field. But I would say that there is real fear uh, in my business, which is where this all started, show business acting and so on, um, yeah, people are uh, rather afraid to speak about a piece of, you know, uh, publicity that's come out or a statement that's been made. You just go, yep, yeah, absolutely, and wait for the people to leave the room before you can speak honestly with your friends. Um, and that's, I've never experienced that in my entire 60 years on this planet. This, this feeling that, uh, and I'm not characterizing feminists as, as in East German, but it's like that, the stars are listening. You better be careful, they're listening. Uh, and that's a genuine feeling. I'm saying that my hand on my... He just called feminist Nazis? <laughs> I mean, modern feminists, a lot of them, yes, but... My heart, 
I'm not saying it to make a point other than the fact that it's true and it's m worrying. Uh, but the sexual misadventures and horror uh, experience is worrying too. So there are two worries. And the, the I think people will look back Let's on this out. debate and, and wonder why political correctness wasn't discussed. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the second time he's made mention of that, the fact that political correctness hasn't come up. I'm wondering if, if everybody got on politics and morality and, and stuff like that instead of actual, like, political correctness. It's, um, <laughs> I, said <it> was <laughs> I said it was slippery. I mean, it's interesting to hear talk about race and about gender and about uh, equality, and it's something that I've thought about a lot and I can learn a great deal about, but that's not why I came to this debate. I was interested in um, what I've always been interested in, the suppression of language and thought, the closing down, the rationalist idea that seems beguiling, that if you uh, uh, limit people's language, it may somehow teach them uh, a different way of thinking, uh, something that would have delighted the inventors of George Orwell's Newspeak, for example. Um, and it, it seems to me it's just implausible. It doesn't and see the problem with that thought process that people have of taking a you know limiting speech and you know basically training people's thought process look at you believe in god or the bible or anything like that i mean just that right there lucifer was an angel wanted to put himself where god was so you you can try to train people to think but free will is a motherfucker just saying. It doesn't work, uh, and that's what I mean by empirical. It doesn't stand an empirical test. It isn't experientially validated, um, as we see from the political landscape now, um, and I worry that we may in the future. So uh, I, I'm so sort of disappointed that the subject has just revolved around academia, which was predictable, because that's the sort of crucible in which these elements are mixed. Um, but even more disappointed that really I haven't heard f from Michel or, or, or from Professor Dyson as to what they think political correctness is. Because what they've talked about is basically saying progress, in, the, in our view, is progress. Well, I agree. That's, you know, yeah. So it is too. And good on progress. But um, how is it that you're saying political, that what we call political correctness, you call progress? That's what you're supposed to be arguing. I want to know what you mean by the internet. Names. <laughs> That's no, but I mean, point. I'm scared. I you're, but if you're I scared. missed it, <laughs> but That's again, the point. You're scared. We, it is a culture you're, of right. fear. I understand there's that element yeah. of fear. What I'm saying is that it's it's a feeling. It's a feeling that is this sort of intangible result of on. Oh, I think come on. primarily. We've all, we've all seen the sort of show trial thing where the person then apologizes. I have so much to learn about sexual politics. I am really sorry. Uh, signed a lawyer crossed out the name of the person. <laughs> it's, it's, you think the okay. real mistake of our left is that we underestimate the right. The right isn't as stupid as we'd like them to be. Yeah. If only they were. Oh, if think... only they weren't so cunning, so sly, so smart, so aware of our shortcomings. And, and, and I just fear that political correctness is a weapon. Part of the problem is either side thinking the other side's fucking stupid. Like, how do you, how do you not see that there's intelligence on both sides, regardless if you disagree with the viewpoints. You might think the viewpoint they have is dumb. Doesn't mean they are. That's just a disagreement of viewpoints. Like, I just, I don't, that I don't understand. I'll never understand how you can be like, oh yeah, they believe this, they're dumb. Like, unless they believe the earth is flat, which, I mean, that just means they're, they're stupid in science. Depends on how much other stuff stacks up on top of that. Of course, and again, that says nothing to IQ or common sense or anything like that. It's just one of their views. It doesn't mean even that they're dumb. It's just, they've got a dumb viewpoint. I don't understand how either side can be like, oh yeah, they believe this, They're that's just stupid, that's wrong. It's like, bruh, have a conversation with them. Like, see where, see how they're, they've come to that conclusion. It, it, but nobody's willing to do that anymore. ...that they value, that the more, the more we tell 
the world, how people should be treated, how language should be treated, what words are acceptable, what attitudes are acceptable, what HR meeting is going to tell you in a long bullet pointed list about how you look at people. All of this is, is meat and drink to bad people, to malefactors, to bad actors. I'm not counting myself as one of those bad actors in that sense, I mean bad actors in the other sense. Right, so, so I. So <laughs> I might actually have to take and find the full debate and take and watch. I don't know if I'll put it up on here or somewhere else, but this seems genuinely just like just Stephen Fry, his takes on things. He's a very intelligent guy. And that culture of fear he's talking about, it, the, the political correctness it, it, that it instills, because if I say something, you know, hell, they're going to come after me, basically. Um, it's like a whole new generation of brown shirts, basically. It's what, what you take and get. So there are, like I said, there are a lot of ways in which I agree with you. Although I kind of, I, I would like to hear, I mean, to turn it back on you, I would like to hear you say, you know, what are the words that have fallen into disrepute that we think, that you think we should be resurrecting, right? I mean, to me, this is this area of like, hotly contested social change the fact that you have to ask that question that's part of the problem you should be able to say whatever the fuck you want whatever you want doesn't matter what the word is now the blowback from some of that all right but trying to you know i, I just don't understand trying to take and please people's words or please people's speech it, it just makes no sense it's for the whole free flow of ideas. You should not be, what word should be resurrected? There shouldn't have to be any words to be resurrected. If you don't like it, fuck it. Scroll through Twitter. Take a scroll down your Facebook feed. Turn the TV. Simple as that. Like, if you're offended by it, okay, that person has every right to say something that sh that you took offense to. Like, I, I don't understand how that's a hard concept for some people. Right now, where a lot of people I have feel it's about words that have gone into disuse. It's very often phrases, jargonistic slogans, heteronormative, cisgendered, um, th those kind of things. They're, they're just an insult. You know, imagine you're a young student arriving at university and someone's bombarding you with this preposterous hermeneutical nonsense from from uh, from misread textbooks, uh, misread Foucault, if I may say, yeah. and misread Derrida, and, and so on. Because yeah, yeah, I, you know, I was a Cambridge them doing English literature, we had our French phase, and, and there's value in that. Um, it's an interesting game, and it is, a, it's a place to... Uh, I, I think I'd j just really say that the, the ghost hovering over for me is, it's a letter Oscar Wilde wrote, and uh, he, he said to Bosie, his love, he said, the fact that you didn't get a degree is, is nothing, but you never acquired um, what is sometimes called the Oxford manner, and I'll say for that, the university manner. Um, he said, Oscar said, I take that to mean the ability to play gracefully with ideas. I think that's disappearing from our culture, and I think it's a terrible thing. Let's go to Michael and Michelle. Uh, there we are. Well, I'll hide behind the lectern in that case. Well, I've been uh, fascinated by this conversation. There's been an enormous clash of cultures in in the conversation, we've had, you know, classic, if I can call it, huckstering snake oil um, pulpit talk, um, <laughs> of which is, um, it's, a, it's a mode of discourse, it's a rhetorical style that I find endlessly refreshing and vivifying, um, but I'm, I'm not sure that we actually focused on, on, on the, the, the point in question. And, my objection has always been towards orthodoxies. I'm a, I'm a heterodox and, uh, and a contrarian, and I can't help myself. And I think there's been an underestimation of the fact that language does affect people. It does make the young, in particular, as they're starting out on their educational or their work careers, it makes them, it makes them very anxious, it makes them very angry, very upset, very alienated uh, to feel that they don't know any more how to operate in the world, how to engage in relationships, how to think honestly. So they, they accrete more and more to their own mini groups. Um, and I do, the, I, yeah, I've got to take and watch more of this. Got to.
And I think that's dangerous and unhappy for society. I think it's reflected in, in a paucity of cinema and literature and art and the culture generally, is that there's a fear that's pervading it. And while people can talk to academia and say, you should come and see our lessons, our lectures are open and free and ideas are exchanged, I'm sure that's true. I'm sure it's true, but I don't think we should underestimate how much this feeling is prevalent in the culture of <laughs> this strange paradox that the liberals are illiberal in their demand for liberality. They are exclusive in their demand for inclusivity. And see that whole point right there, because classically liberals, the fact that like everybody wants to take and <laughs> Bro, the, the classic liberal would be what's technically called a Republican today, right? Like it, it's it's crazy, it's crazy, because Republicans preach, you know, personal freedom, personal rights, small government stuff of that nature. So it, it's all about. <laughs> being liberal with freedoms, being liberal with ideas, being liberal with the whole crackdown of stuff. And, oh, you can't say this, you can't say that. Oh, this is wrong, this is wrong. It's just wild how, at least here in the U.S., people are like, oh, yeah, no, I identify as liberal. And they vote for a party that, which both parties are, the, neither party wants what they claim, like, at all, at all. But listening to the way people have taken it's like bro like that's that's kind of what the republicans were back in the day now that's kind of that's changed and democrats are nowhere close to what the democrats of old used to be like it, it's it's crazy it's it's wild to be honest with you it's wild um which i mean even the even the founders of this country what a lot of their ideas were considered liberal at the time freedom of speech freedom of press ability to own guns and, um, it's just a lot of stuff that they did and even debated that was considered very liberal it's just it's, it's wild how times have changed because now liberal is is seen as almost a dirty word like oh they're you know they're trying to take and push this idea and this idea and this idea and if you don't take and line up with that idea they want to do this that and the other or you can't say certain things that you immediately get called a Nazi or a bigot or whatever if you take into it's like it's it's super wild the difference in the modern like example of a liberal versus the classical liberal it's so crazy it's absolutely nuts they are homogenous in their demand for heterogeneity they are somehow undiverse in their call for diversity. You can be diverse, but not diverse in your opinions and in your language and in your behavior. And that's a terrible pity. Um, so, I, I, I would say that I'm, I'm sorry that it got a bit heated uh, uh, in, in places, because I was hoping it wouldn't. I was hoping it would be a shining example of how people of all different kinds of political outlooks can uh, speak with humor and wit and a lightness of touch as gk chesterton said angels can fly because they take themselves lightly and i think <laughs> it's very important for us who are privileged all four of us privileged to be here to be asked to be here to take ourselves a little bit more lightly not to be too earnest too pompous too serious uh, 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 and not to be too certain uh, it, it's it's a, a time i think for really engaging emotionally fulfilling, passionate, and positive doubt. That's what I would urge. Thank you. I'm worried that I was being a little kind of scattergun, really, and that uh, 
but scattergun and too specific that I had just taken very literally the popular idea of political correctness mm -hmm. as being uh, a, a kind of control of language and a, a shutting down of certain phrases or an uh, introduction of others and 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 the the kind of day-to-day -day, as I say human resource departments of corporations and that that sort of thing and and uh, um, so I was slightly disappointed that it just became a debate about race and about gender and, and so on and uh, but that was, I guess, natural, and I still, you know. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, political correctness, there's, you can't talk about, cert, you can't talk a certain way about race, can't talk a certain way about sex, can't talk a certain way about a whole lot of stuff, because if you try to joke, or if you take taking, you know, just sarcasm, or just anything like that, immediately, rah, you're, rah, 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 rah. it's like, rah, shut up, just shut up. The fact is, I, I, I'm still a lefty, but a soft one. I just don't have. I'm not too soft. I, you know, well, yeah, flabby, <laughs> squashy in every sense. Um, and and I realise that that's not a political point of view. It is a personal one. Right. Um, and the, the gap between the personal and the political, which is a space you obviously are very interested in as a psych psychologist, um, is one that is rarely explored. Um, mm -hmm. uh, pe pe people are either so personal that it has no application in the mm -hmm. outside world and the organisation of human yeah. affairs, or they're so political and so much to do with structure and yeah. the distinction between hierarchies and networks and so on that they forget the individual and that's the space in which the impassioned liberal lives and it's uh, not easy mm -hmm. to do it because you often do sound rather wet and yes. I'm aware that I no, did no, but no. I enjoyed it. Yeah, really no, thank you for it. coming. Just finally before I free you two both to a well-earned drink, mm. uh, anything left unsaid, Jordan? Any, um, any point that you wanted to make that uh, you didn't feel you had the time or the opportunity? No, you I don't think so. I okay. said my piece, yeah. Great. Same question to you, Stephen. I know. I think I, I got across. I mean, there's so much you can talk about mm -hmm. in, in, in that field. And I, I just wanted to leave with the, the point that I do want, <laughs> like everybody, it's, it's, an, it's a no-brainer. We want the world to be fairer, juster, sweeter, kinder. Um, but it's how you get there. Right. Uh, and, um, and I felt I wasn't really addressed. Okay. Well, you got one of those little flies in here. Dag on it. That was, I like that. I, like, I want to take, I've, I've got to watch the whole thing now. I've got to find and watch the whole thing. What I do, and I've reacted to it, I'll definitely put it up somewhere and let y'all know. Um, but the whole, the whole basically policing a speech, is, you know, that he's he referred to a lot of times. Even the, 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 you know, it's almost like the mindset of, uh, you know, we can not wanting people to even think a certain way. So you basically trained her, you know, not taking police words to where they have to think a certain way even that in and of itself is it's so illogical it's so illogical but there's because as humans we're gonna have we're gonna have thoughts we're gonna have like that's we're, we're all unique within ourselves right so we're all gonna have differing thoughts we're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of ideas the same as a lot of other people we're gonna have our own unique takes on things we're gonna have our own unique way of taking and doing stuff what we find funny what we find acceptable and telling somebody oh yeah no that's not acceptable like unless it's unless they're being malicious in any way shut up and if they are being malicious trust me that'll that'll wind up working itself out that's just that's that's how karmatic things work like if they're being malicious in, in the way they're taking and speaking that works itself out so this whole oh you can't say this you can't do that you got to have quotas now for certain you know when you take and do things like movies or whatever it's just everybody's sick of it i think i i, I know i am and it's like right you you got to this unwillingness to to actually listening to eat and it's both sides that are like this both sides unwilling to listen to a different idea from your own there's definitely a certain side that definitely wants to i say that both of them want to take and like people got so upset over kathy griffin with the with the you know decapitated trump head that's in poor taste but she's a comedian it's freedom of speech but the right, oh, let's cancel her. Well, you hypocritic motherfuckers. 
I, it's a poor taste. You don't have to like it. To say let's cancel her. That's it. That's number one. That's that's hypo hypocritical because you complain because they're trying to do that. To folks like Ben Shapiro or you know Jordan Peterson or Dave Chappelle or whoever it is that you're taking and holding up as a oh look oh look they said something I agree with you know it, it's that type of stupidity um, and there's others too. I mean like just having groups taking protest at universities whenever speakers are going to go there. Like a Ben Shapiro. Really? That little short fucker? Like that skinny, well I say short. He doesn't look very tall, but that, that harmless looking son of a gun. People want to hear him, but because you don't like what he has to say, you're going to take and cause chaos and fights and... Really? Re re really? Okay. Alright. So it's, that's it happens on both sides. It's just what each side decides is, you know, correct way of thinking or speaking or acceptable. And it's ignorant. And either, shot, neither side should do it. But we've got over here in the media, it's, it's just absolute propaganda and brainwashing just depends on what flavor of it that you want. Hope you all enjoyed this. Y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.